Good morning students. We are discussing on railway and airport engineering. While we are continuing with the railway engineering, while in today's lecture we will discuss about some of the fittings and fastenings that we used when we uh, bind or when we fix the rails on the sleepers. So first uh, starting with uh, why we provide the rail fastenings or the fittings. Okay. The first that is what is the purpose of providing these railway fittings? That is to hold the rails in their proper position to, to ensure the smooth running of the rails. So for this particular purpose, we are providing the fastening so that the rails and sleepers are uh, hold each other proper, properly. Okay. Well, the use of this fastening uh, is for joining the rails together as well as fixing them. To the sleepers okay so this is the use of this railway fastenings uh, while talking about some of the important fittings and fastening that we uh, use or that we provide in the railways that is fish plate spikes bolts chairs blocks keys and bearing plates so these are some of the important fittings and fastenings. Okay, so let's discuss about all this fastening where we can provide it and what are the specific use of these fittings. So first we will discuss about the fish plates. Well, fish plates are specially rolled section which are used for joining the rays at its end to end with the help of this fish poles. Well, the name that fish plate uh, has been given to this fittings as this kind of section looks like a fish. While talking about some of the functions of this uh, fish plate is to join the rail ends, also to maintain the line and level of the table, of the top table and cause face of the rail ends. Also to resist the impact and uh, prevent the deflection of the rail joints okay with the help of this closely spaced sleeper supports also to transfer the load of the wheels from one rail to the another to provide the vertical and lateral stiffness to the rail joints and to allow for the expansion and the contraction of the rail ends due to the temperature variation so these are some of the important functions of the fish plate so now let's discuss about what are the types of fish plate. Well, the first one that is the ordinary fish plates, which are provides uh, continuous supports and maintain the line uh, and level of the rails. Okay, these are used for joining uh, single rail, short welded rail, uh, or buffer rails, uh, turnouts, and uh, some of the approaches. Well, the next one that is the one meter long fish plate. Well, this is a better substitute of ordinary fish plates in a high density room. Well, it is uh, generally used in laying the low welded rail, uh, repair of uh, rail fractures, bridges, uh, and some of its approaches. So, such kind of one meter fish plates can be used in such critical places as per the instruction for the rail joints on the monoclock concrete sleeper. This one meter long fish plate is being used. Then the combination fish plates, well, well, uh, a set of four combination fish plates are used at joints of uh, two different rail sections. Well, this combination fi uh, fish plates are different from each other and uh, uh, they are marked as IR, OR, IL, and OL. Okay, so those things uh, indicates uh, right in, right left uh, fish plate, then left in uh, and left out fish plates, etc. Okay, and these are uh, fixed apart from their uh, part numbers and the sections of rail. Well, full length of the rail should be used with combination of fish plates without providing any gap between the rails okay so this is about the combination fish plate 
while the next uh, fittings that we use is spikes <coughs> well the spikes are used for holding the rails to the wooden sleepers uh, this can be also used with or without uh, bearing plates below the rails okay now if we discuss about the types of spikes okay the first one that is the dog spike well this dog spikes are used for fixing the flat footed rails to the wooden sleepers these are having simply sharp nails and hold uh, rail flanges with the timber sleeper well this fastening is named dog spikes because the head of this spike looks like the ear of the dog while the section of the spike is uh, uh, of uh, square shape and the bottom part is either pointed or it can be chiseled or it can be blunt well uh, they are cheapest and uh, easy to fix and also to remove from the sleepers it also uh, have a very less maintenance than uh, other gauges okay while talking about some of the number of dog spikes that we require that is for on the straight track uh, we can uh, we require two uh, spikes dog spikes uh, for the cow track the value is three and for the at the joints uh, or at the bridges uh, four spikes should be attached uh, to fix the rail then the next type that is the screw types or screw type spikes well the spikes are tapered screw with the v thread which is used to fasten the rails with the timber sleeper they have more than double the holding power that the dog spikes okay it can have also uh, you know bat better lateral thrust resistance okay compared to the dog spikes they are most costly and also difficult to maintain while the spikes are uh, not screwed tightly to the flange so that uh, it have the flexibility uh, to allow the wave motion okay they are probably fixed by a box spanner okay the next that is the round spikes well these are spikes which are used for fixing the chairs of bull headed rails to the wooden sleepers and also used for fixing the slide chairs of points and crossings they have a head either cylindrical or hemisphere this have a blunt and uh, and limited use the next type that is the elastic spikes well uh, in the dog spikes uh, due to the wave motion or due to the wave action of the rails the dog spikes came out uh, of sleepers and allowed the creep to occur okay so to overcome from this kind of problems which is being observed in the dog spikes this kind of elastic spikes are being in use okay well uh, the elastic spikes have the advantage that its head absorbs the wave motion without getting loosened. The spikes are commonly used in UK and three spikes per base plate are used to fix that chair or to fix that uh, fittings with the rails. Okay, so these five types of uh, spikes are being used as a rail fastenings then uh, if we discuss about the bolts the first one that is the dog bolt well uh, where the sleepers rest directly on the girder they are fastened to the top flange of the girder by bolts and it's called as the dog bolts here the two bolts per sleepers along with the bearing plates are being used then talking about the fish bolts these are made up of a medium uh, or a high carbon steel they are subjected to shear due to heavy transfer stresses. Generally, a projection of 6 mm of the shank is left, and after the nut is tightened, this allows the free expansion and contraction to the rails. Okay, talking about the rag bolts. Well, rag bolts are uh, fixed longitudinally and used to fix the timber or concrete sleepers to the walls of ash pits then these fang bolts 
are the alternatives to the round spikes or we can say the screw spikes. So these are the four types of bolts we use as a rail fastenings. The next fastening is the chair. Well, we have two types of chairs uh, that are used to hold uh, the rails in the proper position. The first one that is the CI chairs, while the bull headed rails are supported on the cast iron chair. And these are fixed to the sleepers by uh, round spikes. In this cast iron sleepers, uh, the chairs are casted with the sleepers and in case of steel sleepers, the chairs are welded to the sleeper so that it can give the proper strength and proper binding. The second one that is the slide chairs. These are uh, the plates of special shape on which the stock and tongue rail are raised. That is the slide chairs. Well, here you can see the, this gap uh, allows to fix the rails uh, into it uh, with proper binding. So this is the slide chairs. Well, the next fastening that is keys. While the Morgan key is about 18 cm long and tempered at uh, 1 in 32 grade. Well, these are patterned by Morgan. That's why this is known as the Morgan key. The keys uh, shoot the CI chair plate sleepers and the steel sleepers. Generally, two keys are required for one link uh, of steel sleeper with the rails. Here you can see. Uh, this is a support or this is a packing sometimes we can say which has been provided uh, into the rail fitting so that this rail section can be fitted properly with this particular chair. So this is the Morgan key, cotters and tie bars. Well, uh, the cast and sleepers require MS cotters and MS tie bars. The quarters are used to connect the CI sleepers uh, to the tie bars and uh, no, a uh, quarter is wedge shaped plate with a split in the horizontal or vertical plane. Its weight is about 360 grams. The tie bars consist of flat plates with four holes for the quarters. The length of the tie bars varies with the type of sleepers and the gauge to be adopted. The next fastening that is the bearing plates. While well, the bearing plates are the cast iron, rough iron or the mild steel plates which are being placed between sleepers and the flat footed rails uh, to distribute the load on the large area of the wooden sleeper. Well, if the flat footed rails are directly fixed on the wooden sleepers, Sinking in the sleeper takes place due to the heavy loads of train and thus loosen the spikes. And to overcome this difficulty, bearing plates are provided under the flat footed rails and bring the intensity of the pressure within the limit. Where these are widely used in the countries like US, uh, but talking about the India, the use of the bearing plates is not extensive. These are used only at special locations such as the rail joints on the curves and bridge, on the ash pit, or under the point and the crossings, etc. The bearing plates may be either of the flat or the canted type. The flat bearing plates are used in the turnout track and such other places where the rails are to be laid flat. In the other cases, such canted bearing plates can be adopted. While using the bearing plates in the railway, has some of the disadvantages such as they distribute the loads to the large area. Well, the overall stability of the track uh, is then increased by using the bearing plates. Also, the overall stability of the track is increased by using the bearing plates. When the bearing plates are used, the wearing of the spikes due to the vertical vibration of the rails against them is greatly reduced. It helps to prevent the destruction of the sleeper due to rubbing action of the rails. It helps to maintain the gauge in a better way and effectively. They also increase the lifespan of the sleepers. So these are some of the advantages of using the bearing plates.
as a rail fastenings. The next fastening that is the pandrol clip. Well, these pandrol clips are also known as the elastic fasteners. They are responsible for attaching the rail to the base plate. So the rail cannot move vertically or horizontally with respect to the base plate. While this contact between the rail and the plate is very important for controlling the forces that are induced by either uh, change in temperature or the dynamic forces that are imposed by the train. If the rail is permitted uh, to slide through the plates, then the compressive or the tensile forces uh, that build up to either cause a rail break or the track buckle, which may cause derailments. While when using the regular spikes, we rely on the rail anchors to control these forces. While this clip is made up of a silicon manganese spring steel bar with a diameter of 20.6 millimeter. It exerts a tall load of 710 kg for a normal deflection of 11.4 meter. While the tall load is quite sufficient to ensure that no relative movement is possible uh, between the rail and the sleepers. The pandrol clip can be fixed on a wooden steel or the cast and sleepers with the help of the base plate. The, in the Indian railways, pandrol clips are mostly used with the concrete sleepers. Okay, so these are some of the fastenings that we provide uh, in the railways. I hope student you understand this topic properly. Thank you so much all of you for your kind attention. I will see you in the next lecture.